Welcome back to another show and tell video. Today we're looking at a selection of 50 caliber rounds. So these will be known as 0 .50 BMG, standing for Browning Machine Gun. Uh, also known as 12.7 by 99 millimeter. And that would be a NATO designation, although this round is used by NATO and other countries. And this is also known as 50 Browning. So the basic dimensions are 0.5 inch uh, rough diameter or 12.7 millimeter. And this was originally designed for the... Um, what would eventually become known as the M2 Browning Heavy Machine Gun. There was a prototype uh, series before that, but I don't believe it was accepted into service. Other uh, usages are as uh, in anti-material rifles, such as uh, Barrett M82 series, as well as its derivatives, as well as other brands. Uh, types as well, whether they be bolt action, uh, separate feeding through magazine, or uh, single fed, or in machine guns, uh, usually with belt links, or at least some sort of feed mechanism. Flipping through my notes here. Uh, I mean, it's been used in a number of other platforms. Uh, this was originally, I guess, uh, designed in the 1910s to 1920s were the developmental years for this uh, type of round. And again, it could be used in man portable uh, items, vehicle mounted items, in which case they would be, of course, heavier, and they could have rotary barrels, single barrels, belt fed, sh feed chute fell fed, you know, and then as again with the man portables, the bolt, the semi-auto uh, loaders, and um, uh, in regards to other vehicles, it's not just limited to the land vehicles; it could be uh, used in air and sea vehicles, uh, uh, singly, multiply. Uh, etc., uh, depending on the weight capacity of the vehicle. Uh, it could be fixed wing, rotary wing, so it was used for many decades and continues to be used today. Uh, so some of them are in um, um, self feeding or uh, electric powered, particularly the rotary cannons and the uh, chain guns. And uh, general usage, again, anti-material, anti-aircraft, anti-armor, anti-vehicle, whether they be uh, boats, um, planes, land vehicles, uh, air vehicles, etc. Uh, also against light structures and fortifications, uh, meaning walls and uh, uh, other reinforced uh, uh, wall structures as well. Uh, typical types of rounds are ball, which would be like a kind of solid mass round, tracer rounds, armor piercing or anti-armor, incendiary rounds, sabot rounds, uh, which usually uh, uh, use a sabo with some sort of subcaliber round in the being held in the middle of uh, the sabo. And when they're linked together, there's two methods of uh, link usage, uh, whether they be, um, I believe, M2, M9 type links for the M2 and later on M3 platforms that use a pull type system, whereas the link uh, or the round is pulled backwards through the link and then fed into the mechanism versus a push type of round, which is typically used in more confined uh type of uh, shorter receivers so it would uh, be um, uh, used in like armored fighting vehicles and I believe that would be like an M15 type of belt fed so uh, feel free to research uh, the long history of the 50 caliber and other uh, platforms that was used in uh, there'd be uh, 
at least on a NATO side, possibly classified under the GAU type of gun system. So that will include like flexible mounts, uh, wing mounted, uh, gun pods, that sort of thing. Um, using gunships and various other uh, vehicles as well, and even defense systems. And of course, this round being designed in the 1910s through 20s, it did see use in World War II theaters, various other overseas theaters, Korea, and beyond the jet age is one way to uh, put it, uh, particularly in uh, air vehicles, whether they be uh, multiple engines, uh, single engines, and again, beyond into the jet age. Um, and some other brands that stand out would be Barrett, Serbu, McMillan, Accuracy International, Armalite, Kadex, Desert Tech, PGM, Hecate, and of course all the defense industries that uh, arm their weapons platforms with them as well. Those are quite numerous to mention. So let's take a quick look at what we have here on the table. Again, this is just a limited selection of the types of rounds. And again, flipping through my notes, pardon for a second. If we start here on the left, I believe these first three would be classified as the M, uh, uh, I believe, 33 series of ball rounds, typically copper jacketed with some sort of possibly uh, steel core within them. Um, this next one here is actually a hand load, I believe, with a Hornady Amax 0.510 caliber, 750 grain, secant ogive, sharp pointed tip, which you can see here with this... Uh, Separate kind of silver tip driven into the center there. Next up is a solid brass projectile that's probably been uh, turned separately on machinery and again hand loaded into there. I don't have the dimensions or weight and grains of this. Just uh, one thing to note of loads is they're typically loaded. I mean, here we have a unloaded round you can see how far these may be seated and then possibly crimped within the neck of the top of the casings so this one i assume is going down to around possibly here when it starts to boat tail in on the old guy uh, next up is one of the sabo rounds so this one Actually, I believe has some sort of 30 caliber round within a plastic sabo. And then these last two here with the black rings at the top would be M2AP, I believe. So armor piercing rounds. There's some sort of possibly a tungsten core or some very heavy mass type of core on the inside. Uh, additionally, again, I don't have these loaded. These are uh, just bought as loose uh, projectiles. Uh, these, I believe, are silver M8 armor-piercing incendiary rounds. So you can see how the bottoms of these actually have some sort of separate filled core, possibly, probably to block in that incendiary material. Um... Another thing to note about the 50 caliber round, because of the power involved with them, it's very important that whatever item you're using these in, that you use proper what's called headspace, and particularly in auto loading mechanisms, timing. So headspace uh, and timing, feel free to research the proper definitions of them. I'm just going to quickly summarize is the headspace would be the distance between the bolt face and cartridge base uh, versus timing refers to a firing sequence uh, when uh, moving parts are 
uh, make sure that they are actually in the correct positions in order to fire. And um, I guess in the M2 systems, and I believe the M3s, now they have, um, well, the ones with the quick change barrel, uh, they come with a kit package now. Uh, there's actually a fixed headspace and timing uh, in the upgrades to, I believe, the M2A1 and beyond platform. So that actually saves a few procedural steps in uh, changing out barrels, uh, which aids in safety as well as uh, efficiency. Um, if we take a quick look at some comparison rounds, let's start with our usual small round here, 22 long rifle. We can compare that with just the bullet of a 50 cal. You can see the massive size difference there, as well as in comparison to a full-sized round. Next it up is a more modern round, the or relatively modern, considering this was from the 1950s. Uh, the 223 5.56 millimeter size type of round. You can see that is barely the same length, well, maybe a little bit longer than a typical 50 caliber projectile. And again, against a full size 50 cal, you can see the size difference. And also, in comparison, here are a couple of different. Uh, 5.56 or 223 caliber rounds, uh, bullets. And you can see the size difference between those and the 50 cal. So if somebody tries to convince you that uh, 223 or 5.56 is a high powered round, they don't know what they're talking about. This is high powered. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Here we have 7.62 by 3.9 the uh, Eastern Block competitor to some of these other NATO type rounds. Here we have a 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO or also known as 0.308 Winchester round also with a similar projectile caliber and again you can see the size difference between typical 30 caliber which is actually universal if I slide this over a little bit to most of these 30 calibers here too although some of them have longer uh, overall lengths but at least if you, if you notice have the very similar diameter because they are all derivatives of 30 caliber in some sort of way Continuing, this is uh, from a similar time frame, the 303 British rimmed round. You can see what uh, the rifle infantry sized round in comparison. Still quite a difference. This is a 7 millimeter Mauser. So I believe seven by fifty-seven millimeter. So possibly used by the opposition, or some of the opposition as well as some of the allies as well. This is an eight millimeter Mauser, so seven point nine seven by fifty-seven. Don't hold me to that. Uh, the memory is fading at the moment. Uh, there were actually some other der smaller derivatives, I believe 7.92 by 57 as well. So depending on what type of barrel diameters were used, um, but universally known as 8 millimeter Mauser. Again, you can see the size difference between, say, the infantry round of the opposition versus the 50 BMG. Continuing into a later decades. This is a 7.62 by 54 rimmed used by Eastern Bloc nations. Again, infantry as well as light machine guns, medium-sized machine gun round. Similarly, these were also used all in various machine gun type platforms, belted as well as uh, uh, individual man-portable magazine feds. 
as well. And again, another one of the 30 caliber rounds, 30 odd six. And again, with the rifle sized round versus the 50 BMG. And here's a couple more 30 caliber bullets in comparison to the 50 caliber size projectiles. So these are both are different sizes. So, taking a quick look at just a few examples of 50 BMG or uh, 50 Browning machine gun type of rounds. So, feel free to research the history of Browning and as well as 50 caliber and uh, its use throughout the decades. This has been another show and tell video. Feel free to check out other show and tell videos on the channel on vintage mill serve tools and expanded topics. We also do unboxing videos as well as a selection of book review, media reviews, and a series called Curios for the Curious videos on more artsy type objects. Feel free to check all those out. Feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.